we are back again with another OpenAI Codex video so this is gonna be a rather short video in which uh, I want to point out a very important uh, aspect of artificial intelligence and the future of coding and all that uh, uh, jazz and mumbo jumbo so there have been a lot of people first off uh, I want to say that I'm also uh, I'm at the intersection of both fields of um, or maybe three relevant fields AI and machine learning uh, so AI machine learning being one field then cybersecurity and penetration testing bug bounty hunting cybersecurity research being another field and the third one would be coding and I get asked a lot of questions such as uh, will AI replace uh, programmers, will AI replace cybersecurity professionals, will AI replace penetration testers and all that stuff. Now th there is, I think there is no short answer or no very simplistic answer. One of my answers, one of my answers is that it definitely is, so AI it definitely is impacting all of these fields as we speak so not in the future but as we speak right now but and the big but is uh, if you're smart about it you can actually future proof your career in any of these fields so the question shouldn't be is it relevant to still learn coding in 2021 yes it is relevant if you're actually doing it from a certain perspective and that perspective i'm going to put it straight is uh, you are going to be better off if uh, you are learning code you're learning how to code machine learning models even though machine learning models even though models like da vinci know how to build neural networks like for example let's actually do a very simple case here let's Let's say we, we want to do a neural network in 200 lines of code. Let's give it a little bit of um, uh, space to work with. So we're going to give it a temperature of 0.3. Now let's actually say uh, a very basic uh, implementation of neural network in python or i could just uh, do a very simple algorithm such as logistic or even uh, a very basic implementation of linear regression so linear regression is often used for uh different machine learning problems it's an algorithm that it's rather simple you have linear regression where uh, let's actually look at a linear regression model linear regression let's actually look at some images so this is linear regression and then you have logistic regression which has a different sort of like um, logistic regression it has a different uh, graphical visualization so you have linear regression and then you have logistic regression and if we ask codex for a very basic implementation of linear regression and then submit we get nothing i mean we get stuff but this is actually probably in some sort of a mathematical language i should have specified since i give since i gave it a a little room to play with if i would have said 0, 0.00 in this case if we run it back it's probably going to code it it's not going to code it in python so if i'm saying a very basic implementation of linear regression in python and i could even say with numpy but let's just not say that and we go back to the 0 0.3 temperature we get nothing let's run it again still so we don't get uh, probably the output that we're looking for let's say linear regression in python 0.3 so you can see the model is not doing any i mean it's it sucks right now i i'm not sure what's wrong with it but it sucks let's do zero temperature 
try that again. This is something else. So the following code performs a simple linear regression on the data set. The code is taken from the scikit-learn documentation. So let's see if this actually exists. And then I'm going to get back to my main point here. And it does. So linear regression example. It just uh, tells you uh, it imports matplotlib, numpy, it uses scikit-learn, and then it actually uses one of the preloaded data sets from scikit-learn, which is the diabetes data set. And then it probably here, it's going to split the target. So split the data into training and test. Split the targets into what? Into training and test. Again. X train, X test, Y train, Y test. Then it actually creates the linear regression. But uh, here, I could have just specified with NumPy alone without actually scikit-learn because scikit-learn is, is a um, sort of like a higher level library where you can just uh, call whatever model you want. In this case, they have uh, linear regression. So you have the linear model, they have a logistic model, they have neural networks, they have decision trees, random forests, and many other models. Not only for a classification problem uh, or uh, problems, but also for, um, so yeah, for classification, for regression, for a supervised and unsupervised learning. But going back into uh, my main point, it is still relevant to learn coding especially if you learn coding pertaining to machine learning and neural networks because models such as da Vinci, as you've seen, uh, if you don't actually give it very specific instructions and play with the parameters, sort of like tune them, uh, it won't give you good output. Even And it often is that the output that it gives is not 100% correct or it doesn't run, which is why debugging skills are going to be uh, highly sought after with uh, the proliferation of models such as Da Vinci. And I'm still, uh, I've said it in my previous videos and I keep saying it, I'm very impressed by Da Vinci. It knows a lot, it can code a lot of stuff, it makes mistakes and if you know uh, where to look for and what to look into you're going to be able to correct this mistake so yes learn python learn whatever other language you want to learn learn javascript like here uh, the the codex javascript sandbox it's not extremely useful because it doesn't run a, it doesn't actually some of the apis if i want to call an api it's going to be blocked because of some sort of a uh i think it's um it has some cross origin resource sharing rules or um for some reason it actually blocks api requests that uh, for security purposes so to speak whatever that means but uh <laughs> yeah but anyways i want to say that it is very relevant to learn and uh, people who are gonna learn uh, machine learning and AI and how to code machine learning and how to debug machine learning models such as DaVinci here uh, are going to be highly sought after. So yeah, start with Python, start with JavaScript. Python is probably the easiest. JavaScript is also very handy. Start with uh, Golang may not be the easiest, uh, but any of these three, learn machine learning, learn how to build machine learning models in these languages, uh, and then uh, if you're gonna be using DaVinci and other AI writing uh, models, your work is going to be 10 x For example, I could simply say, the codex here uh, let's see an application in streamlit that
cause that uh, an application in Streamlit that shows the last week the last week's price for for let's say CRISPR which is a stock let's actually say for Tesla stock an application in Streamlit that shows the last week's price for Tesla stock let's start with that and then maybe we can do some sort of a prediction we'll leave the temperature to zero and then let's do it I don't see calling it an AP calling uh, using let's actually say using the Yahoo using Yahoo's Yahoo's API sort of like still doesn't want to it actually wants to read the data from file here so calling Yahoo's API or an application in Streamlit that shows the last week's price for Tesla maybe if we increase the temperature a little bit thereby letting the model become um, less deterministic and less repetitive interesting is this actually working let's see it is <laughs> okay so um, let's continue that's it so that was it because it's actually doing the same thing an application that uh, this is it let's let's actually see if it works place this in notepad put it on the desktop uh, let's say tsla.py all files save then CD desktop streamlit 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 run tsla.py there you go wow okay so I have no words. But what is this? What is actually displaying here? Close interval one day period one period one what's this is this a unix linux linux time converter yes so it actually gives us september 25 2019 let's look into tesla stock tesla stock September 2019 mm, historical prices let's go to five years not available let's look into Yahoo then Tesla so this would actually be September 2019 sort of like
Do we have a chart or something? Chart. Two years. Select two years here. Anyways, as you can see, what is actually doing so I wasn't very specific I only said last week's price I could have been more specific saying from maybe June 2021 till September 2021 in this case it queries the API from uh, uh, Yahoo and it downloads uh, from this period so September 19 to this period which is probably still 2019 Mm, no. so it actually does it for a year from September uh, 2019 to September 2020 and this is what we actually get here so if we look into the price for September 2020 the close for and this is actually in terms of the days I believe sort of like anyways uh, this is what um, this is what I'm telling you it knows how to do things because it's learned from its training uh, on the hundreds of gigs 170 gigabytes of Python code that's what uh, Da Vinci codex has been trained on uh, but my main point again is you are still very uh, likely to succeed as a programmer who's just starting out if you learn how these models work learn how to code machine learning and most specifically if you learn how to debug code like this because da vinci is very likely to make mistakes which is why not only da vinci but other models that are uh, being trained on code probably in the future they're going to make less and less errors but the idea is that if you know how they work sort of like under the hood or if you know how to debug them you're going to be very successful as a programmer and that's it for this video